So today we're going to be discovering how others use live documents in their classrooms, um, experience what it's like to use live documents as a student and learn the basics of setting up and using live documents for teaching. Once you're in uh, the following page, uh, once you're in on the following page, you can introduce yourself uh, by choosing an image that most appeals and um, enter your name uh, next to it. And nobody is saying they're getting stuck, so I will move on. Oh, Amber's joining. That's nice. And you can see above, I can I get a view of who's joining in the sheet. So I've got an idea that we've got 10 people. Excellent. I should put my name. I, I like this one, actually. Maybe I spent too much time with the dogs, but I'll add that one in. Thank you. So we might just have a bit of a chat about um, some of the benefits of using live documents. I mean, for students, they can collaboratively learn with experiential, problem-centered and student-centered instruction. I'm going to reject that change. Oh, someone's already fixed it. Good, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously um, one of the benefits for teachers is that we can reject changes as they come through, so that's nice. Um, we can have uh, problem-centred and student-centred instruction. Uh, we can have a shared record of learning. So if, if students miss out on an activity because they're, they're sick or some other reason, that, that there's a, a shared record there. Um, and, and even the quiet students can engage. So we're, we're allowing multiple forms of interaction. Um, for us, uh, we can see how our students are engaging. So I, could, I, could see, I can see how many people are joining here and I can see um, that there's some interaction happening. Uh, I can, we can get sort of correct misunderstanding. So if we're asking students to, um, to, to try and answer problems and, and solve problems, solve issues and if we're providing a form then we can quickly see if there's something that students aren't quite getting and we can adapt our teaching um, and another nice thing is that we can review the document history we can see who's made changes and then we can restore to a previous version if if there's a problem and just just thinking about some of the universal design for learning benefits i mean we can foster collaboration and our community in representation, we can customize the display of information and action and expression. We can support, we can provide some templating and really support um, students with their planning and strategy development. And just for that middle one of representation, I might just show one, one um, benefit is that by default, there's a separate pages option here. But if, if I find this layout distracting, I have the choice of having more of a, a standard view. Um, so I, I can control how, how big things are. Uh, if I have poor vision, I've got all sorts of um, controls about how to preview the, uh, you know, view this information. I can also, there's a immersive readers and there's all sorts of um, techniques there for students. And now we might talk about some examples. Um, so here's the first one. This is from my good friend, Elena, who has joined us today. Elena, would you like to talk about how you use um, doc these documents in your classroom? Thank you. We are here. There are two people here that could talk about this or talk to this. One is Tony Biancotti that I see is here, and he has used them with me in his tutorials. And uh, hello, everybody. And Chris always involved me and, and in trouble. Uh, and um, uh, these are just simple, vulgar Google Sheets. Um, and um, I, they, they are working in groups, as you can see. And um, this is for a communication campaigns class. Um, and um, and as you can see, uh, um, I don't know why, Chris, I cannot open this completely. 
to see the whole, but I, I have it here. So this is a, a, an example of uh, the brand Dove that everybody knows. So we have several groups in there and uh, we ask them a question uh, and then the group discusses and they answer. And, uh, and then we see their answers and discuss their answers in class. Why is this working for us? And it, it really works, not all the time, but it works a, a lot, is that they feel compelled to participate. They feel, and also, of course, um, you know, I check what's, happened with, what's happening with group one or group two, group three, and I sort of prompt them to answer. And um, and they do it, and they write, and they discuss, and they discuss in the table between them, amongst them, and then, you know, um, then the discussion is in class. I don't know if you want to ask me a question, but we do this every week, as you can see, to one, to two, to two, you can see the, the sheets here, and, uh, and it's different questions. In this particular case, we are studying how to conduct research for a company or for a brand. And uh, we are integrating research to this and types of research or research methods. And the other one is more theoretically, uh, there was a question about theory that applies and also is about the strategies and tactics that the company um, is applying in communication. Which type of communication strategies or tactics do you think they are applying? So it's a simple exercise that is um, is meant to prepare them, is prepping for a specific assignment. In this, it's a simulation, but in this particular, because they have a true client, I bring the real life clients, it's authentic assessment. I bring two clients to the, to the course and they are working for them. So, um, this is what we do. There is a question from Amanda, is it? Yeah, how do you set up these groups? Uh -huh. Well, listen, different ways. Um, usually because these are Master of Communication students, usually international students, I allow them to, um, or we allow them. Tony is here, who is, I've uh, been working with, he's my teaching associate. And um, we normally either you know, allow them to form their groups themselves uh, freely. Um, we have conversations pre previously to see who likes a particular client, who likes a particular case, and we can group them according to the client or according to the tastes. Um, but if there are any issues, we can also sort of very democratically um, try to guide them towards a particular group or another but Sorry, you know, i just meant um is it is that like copied and pasted from excel and then they can work directly on that like uh, no 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 it's um it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a google sheet and um, oh. it's a google sheet it's not an excel sheet and uh we prepare the questions in advance for each one of the tutorials, and then they answer, and um, and we discuss them in class. So no, no, there is no copy paste here. They do a little bit of research in class. We give them time. For instance, you can see here that these students in group one or group three, they conducted a bit of research in class, and um, that they wrote, things here i don't know tony are you there can you help me with this tony i don't know if tony is there I, uh, I... yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks elena that's um okay. that's really helpful um I, I i i think the another important thing is you've got about 170 students in your class is that oh yes but this is not in the in the lecture this is in the tutorials so yeah. each tutorial has at least 28, 30 students, mainly international students, uh, although there is a percentage of domestic students. So it's interesting because usually, I don't know if that is your experience, guys, but 
Some international students don't engage, don't like to participate in class. You sort of need to pull their answers and, uh, you know. Uh, and in this particular case, it has uh, resulted, it turned out well, because they um, they answer in writing, they discuss in their own groups, we go group by group to talk with them, and then they write their, ans their answers on the sheet. That's awesome, thank you. Um, I, and I guess that, I mean, the reason that we're showing this is it's, it's a Google Sheets example, but it's something that you could easily do in the um, with the Microsoft 365 system we're bringing in. Yes. Um, and and John, John will talk through some of that setup um, very soon. Um, but it's a it's an easily transferable thing. It really it's not really the platform that counts. It's the the way that students are working together and and the way they um yeah where, where they they're, engage. The, they're sometimes it's sometimes sorry Chris. Sometimes it's so difficult to make them participate and engage in class. And this is easy. Even if you can use it in Padlets, uh, we can use it in in many. Platforms. platforms and the students are here aren't they they're not they're in person well yes but but this is started during covid so i started yeah. using this um uh these tools during covid in 2020 uh, because we didn't have the engagement in class so this is when i started to engage with this type of things and uh of course before that we 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 use uh pilot but um, yeah, mainly in person, but because if it, it makes sense when it was online and they work well for, you know, groups working together, uh, breakout rooms working together, but now in person, they, they use them and they, some of them really like them. I haven't had complaints this semester about that in the, in the CCATs. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Elena. Yeah. Um, we've got another example now. This is um, this is from a criminology course, yeah. and it's a it's a smaller class. Um, there's there's about fifteen to twenty students in this class. But what what Dr. Anna Antrobus does is she gets them to get students to work in uh, project teams, and and she well teams lowercase teams, um, uh, and then she uses uppercase teams as in the platform. Um, to get them to um, to have project groups, uh, so each each project group is given a, a teams private team, teams channel. So uh, the students have a platform to um, to work together on on documents uh, and prepare um, and uh, you know develop their resources for their um, community groups that they'll be working with and. Uh, Displayed on the slide is um, a project management tool that she supplies the students with. Um, this is something called uh, Microsoft Lists. Um, so this, this it's like a, a Kanban board, which is a project management tool, and, and students can create a list of tasks. Yeah. They can assign themselves what tasks they'll do, and then they can drag the card from between the different stages, uh, in progress and completed, for example. Um, and, and she does this um, partially observed, so they, they work on some of this in, in class and then they can also continue the work outside of class time. Um, and, and because they've got, they got this platform, she can observe how the, how the progress is going, um, communicate with students who uh, might be you know, groups who are falling behind or struggling um, and really have a good oversight of how these the projects and the, the, the teams are going along. We've got some other collaboration ideas. Um, and, I mean, we, we can use these documents for students to give feedback to each other on um, case study presentations. So, I mean, apart from the obvious, um, they can also give each other comments, so they can supply documents with each other and then comment and, and give each other feedback that way. Um, they can raise questions with each other about articles they've summarised 
they can use them to explain concepts to each other in, in plain English. And, um, you know, so instead of um, show a deeper understanding by taking something that's in technical language and then explaining it for a, a broader audience. And that often shows a deeper understanding than, um, than to do it on a technical level. And we can also do things with in-class discussions, and that's that's similar to, to what Elaine has dis, um, displayed. It would be a similar, um, similar format, but just a different use. Um, and they can also, again, they can have that shared record of, of notes and key points. And I might hand over to John really soon, but we just wanted to walk through another another sort of example, which is a, a more visual way of collaborating together. Um, and just on on the left in this slide is something that um, that I've done in my own work, which is to have students respond to an image. Um, so there's it wasn't in PowerPoint; it was another platform, but they can. They can make notes about a particular image, um, which is uh, really difficult to do in any other sort of platform. So um, over to you, John. Okay, thank you, Chris, and hello, everyone. So the next thing we're going to do is look at how you actually share your documents with the students. So I'm actually going to share my screen. And I'm going to bring up my Explorer just to show you my files. So the first thing you need to make sure is that you're in OneDrive or your files are in OneDrive in the cloud, not in, say, documents or downloads because that's just sitting on your computer. And I've got these two PowerPoint files and we're going to play with one of them just to show you how you can set it up and also to collaborate very quickly. So this file here in my OneDrive, this is my PowerPoint. And one way you can do it quite easily is on the top right-hand side, you've got the Share button. And I click on that and Share. Now, you may have done this with um, other staff members, like sharing a document with another academic, et cetera. But if you want to share it with all the students, the easiest way to do it is to go to this little cog icon down here. And you would select people in the University of Queensland and you want them to be able to edit this. And so I'm going to apply those settings and then you can copy the link and you can give that to your students uh, in your Blackboard course or email or whatever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it into the chat just bear with me for a moment. Okay, you can all see my screen? Okay. You can see all the names are appearing and we've got people on different slides. So if you want to go and do a little bit of editing, so in slide two, um, put where you would like to locate the arrow and then in slide three add some text about how you feel about this in terms of confidence And there's also slide four. If you've got a, a tip to share. And as you're clicking through the PowerPoint, you will see other people uh, adding their text and collaborating.
I notice a comment there of uh, some students could be rude. Um, I always find it's really important up front to uh, set the expectations um, to try and avoid those sorts of situations. Okay, so you can generally see how this works. And in terms of the benefits, obviously, it's promoting active learning. It's also good for the students who are unable to attend. So they may be away because of illness. So once you put this document up after class, say on your Blackboard course, it's not the same as being there, but at least they can kind of see a little bit of the process that may have transpired in tackling a question, for example. What I really like about this is if you set up groups and you can see that a group is clearly struggling, they're not able to put some answers down, well, you've got that real-time feedback. You can go in straight away with that group and you can scaffold and prompt and get that group back on track. So that's a nice little way to get them going that way. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop with this document for the moment and just show you another way you can share your documents. Um, you can use that share button. The other way, of course, is you can right click and go to OneDrive and then to share which essentially just brings up the same dialog box as I showed you before. And as you can see, um, I'm sharing this. Well, I'm going to the same file and I can see all you're all there anyway. So that's how you share. And a PowerPoint's a good way of doing it. And I just want to show you quickly this economics example, a housing crisis. So what you could set up in your tutorial is a PowerPoint where you give the students a little bit of data, which they have to go through. And then you can set up some questions. You say, okay, I want you to look at the data, look at these two questions, and I want you to come up with um, some solutions. And then you would create a slide for each group. So group one, group two, three, four, etc. They go away and work on the document. And while they're doing that, you're monitoring by flicking through the slides for each group. And then you can provide that real time and just in time feedback straight away. In terms of universal design for learning, which Chris mentioned earlier, obviously, in terms of engagement, this is a good way of getting students to come to the task in the first instance and to collaborate. I particularly like how it's a different way of representing the content. So I've used some visuals here on purpose to help them understand the content. And then, of course, they can use text, but they can also um, use images as well if they want to, if they feel that's a really good way of expressing their understanding of the answer. So I'll leave it at that point here and stop sharing. Okay, are we back to you, Chris? Oh, sorry, stop yeah. share. There we go. All right, great. Thank you, John. Um, while I'm setting up a share, um, Elena, you had your hand up earlier. Is there something you'd like to ask? I had it for a minute and then I put it down because uh, when he's when when John said about um, setting up the groups, um, I was wondering if you are setting them up differently from the way we do it in class. So we are physically in a class; they have their groups. Sometimes it's the same group for the whole semester. Sometimes they change. My question is uh, how you monitor that and. Uh, whether you are setting these groups on Blackboard or there is another way 
that you can set up the groups uh, using the PowerPoint or I, I'm not sure, some magical way. <laughs> I think it depends on the type of activity. So the example I just shared is just like a one-off activity for that week's topic. Um, and so you might want to share, um, set up um, in the tutorial and just say, okay, I want groups of four or five and they, they go and move to that. But then if you've got an activity like it's an assignment, uh, one way I've seen it done in economics is they set up the groups in Blackboard at the very beginning of the assessment task, and then they just stay with that group because obviously they're working together over a, a number of weeks to come up with the final product. So they're two different approaches, and I think it depends on the type of activity that you're trying to, uh, which you're using. Yeah, we, we normally said at the beginning is, you know, random and they, they sit up with whoever, but then we we set up the definite groups for the final assignment. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think I, I, I from what I could see um, and I understand, Elena, I think it would be a lot like your the example you had with your Google Doc. It would be... Um, based on the, the tables they're sitting on, and you could say that's you'll be group one, you're group two, etc. Or it could be some other, yeah, it's just yeah, classroom management one hundred and one. <laughs> what I what I what I like about John's example, if I may say so, is that better the better than the Google Docs uh, uh, um, to to use images. Because today, you know, everything is image and visuals and videos. Mm -hmm. So through the, the PowerPoint, you can even insert a video if you want, if students want to insert a video. Yeah, well, for example, in economics, um, we use a lot of graphs. Exactly. So the students uh, might want to represent something in a graph. They can go into another application, quickly draw up the graph, create an image of it, and then just place it into the PowerPoint. You know, so um, they can use a whole range of tools outside of PowerPoint and then just insert them into PowerPoint. So, yeah, image image tools um, would be an obvious example. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm reminded of some of our um, friends in the language school. They would, um, back when Jamboard was an option, they would do a similar thing and there'd be a different slide per group and they'd have like close reading activities. So um, students would um, find images that as are associate with the word that, that's the topic of the slide or, um, or, or, or add images about, the, about the, the, sorry, or add words, type words about the um, image that's being displayed um, in, in the language that is the, the topic of that class. Um, so it's, yeah, really a richer sort of visual way of, of working together. Yeah. Um, so we've got a, we'll, we'll have some time for more questions later. Um, I, we'll get back to your question, Lisa, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought we'd go through um, some of the options. So we've, this one, I think John's really done a great job of stepping us through how you do this, which is um, sharing things as a link where you've, you go to the share option in the top right hand corner and you click the link, link settings icon and then you choose people in your University of Queensland and then you copy the link. Another option is to do it through uh, the Microsoft Teams system. So this is more if you want uh, want to have to restrict the students, uh, restrict it to uh, the students in your class, um, uh, and those enrollments will update twice daily um, from Allocate Plus. Um, so for that, you would need to access uh, the you click the the course team link from your course, and then activate it, and then upload or or create a document in the files tab. And then, um, and then enable that Teams link. And 
here we are in uh, resources, tips and questions. So we've got lots of guides here uh, linked in the document um, and just some overall tips is um, just this is a great one from John, which is just to try sharing a document with a colleague. And then um, if, you've, if you have if you can find a student who's willing to be a guinea pig, try it with them before you um, try it in, in the wild. Um, and then you can share the links, share those links in Blackboard Padlet or Teams because the links are very long. Um, you can't expect students to type them. Um, and then uh, as we've seen some examples of this already, if you use um, pair or group responses like think, pair, share, uh, you'll end up with fewer co-authors in a large class. So you, you manage the technical limitations by how you design the activities. Um, I will ask, uh, if you want to ask a question, you can type into the document here and we'll continue the, the theme of, of um, collaborative documents or you can unmute. But firstly, we'll get to um, Lisa's question. How do you risk manage the sharing of the link with external students or others? Is it okay to just link, link the, uh, share the link? Should we set up our own groups? And if so, how should we do that? Um, so yeah, so that's that's where the uh, the team site comes in, and that the um, yeah, so that that's a way of automatically managing access to just the students in your class. Um, yeah, and I welcome people to just unmute and ask questions if if you wish. So Chris, for my um, course, I've actually, I think I've got 200 students in it and my tutors have all got um, their own little teams um, or channels in that, in that, in that teams um, group. So I'm hoping that we can share a document as a group with each other as the tutors, and then they can push that out to their own tutor group and I could use it in this way. Is that, and that would then secure it. It would only be that tutor group that would be able to have access to that. And they yes. wouldn't be able to send that link to their friends in another tutor group, would they? And then they'd be able to have access or is that just shutting, it's keeping it nice and secure? Um, yeah, so if you've got uh, if you've got private, so you can have private channels um, and public channels in in the team site. Uh, what I'd probably recommend is to um, view the recording of this morning session, which was all about using teams in in class. And um, and hats off to Huang; she did an amazing job this morning of managing all that, despite having a call from her kid's school <laughs> five minutes before the lesson, before the session started. Um, and it, yeah, she, she walks, she does a great job walking through all of the ins and outs of, of how that works. Um, Thank you. Again, That's good. Yeah. And the, again, the, uh, the memberships come through from Allocate Plus. I've just put into the chat, um, a link from ITS, which is basically what I explained. So if you can't remember it all, um, that link there is how you share a document. Great, thank you. Um, seeing as, unless, uh, are there any more questions? Please feel free to um, uh, um, say any any things that you're thinking about trying in your classroom. So anything that has made you think you might give it a go this semester? I think it's fantastic and I'm really I'm really pleased that you're showing us how to do it online because I think that I was looking at the whiteboard in Teams and thinking of using that, but that can be that's an infinity thing and it can be quite difficult to navigate after a while. So I love the idea of creating those documents in Teams, but then being able to share them and then being live and keeping them um, nice and organised for our students. So it's excellent. Thanks. Yeah, yeah me, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I'm I'm um, we've actually been waiting for this for a long time. It's um, it's been promised for, for so many years, um, and I think it's going to be great to be able to provide um, uh, real time structured um, templates for students. I think that's something that I'm particularly excited about. Uh, um, guide their learning a bit more. Please. Uh, yes. I uh, sorry, I had a guest lecture uh, in political communication, um, a lady uh, from the industry, and she brought a quiz. It was about government communication, and she brought a quiz 
or some sort of questions for the students in it was a guest lecture. And she brought the thing called menti.com. You are you yeah. familiar with menti? Yes. Uh is for uh, you know a, a QR code, etc. So what 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 is that secure? It, that's paid. I suspect that's a paid device or something like that. Um what? Yeah, we um, if she doesn't have a license for Mentimeter, um, the closest analogy we would have is um, uh, is Echo Pole, um, Echo Pole. But it's a little bit it's a little bit um, a little bit tricky to set up. Um, I personally like the Microsoft Forms, and there's a there's a presenter mode, um, and you can show. And as you go, you can show the results of the students um, as uh, word clouds and things like that. Mm. Okay. There's yeah, there's there's almost too many options. <laughs> okay, no, I I understand that. I wanted to know the secure one because I guess this one is yeah difficult. Yeah. Okay, and 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 do you advise to use that kind of thing? Ah, uh, yeah, I I think um I think uh. As these the response systems like that are great because it um you know as you know we've got very diverse classrooms and particularly with large classes um it gives more students an opportunity to to speak um because you know um they're not they're not having to wait for each other to speak and you don't just hear from the shy you know you don't uh, you don't just hear from the confident students who you hear from all the time mm. um you get more viewpoints you get a better understanding of of where students might be uh, misunderstanding some concepts, and then you can adapt adapt your teaching as as you go. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, um, the great thing about forms or using that type of technology is it informs your teaching on the spot. So, like, if you put out a question, and you can see most of the the group is getting it incorrect. Well, obviously, that's a you know a trigger for you to remediate pretty quickly. The other great thing about um, what I'm excited about with what we've shown you today is it gives us visibility into the process of learning. So if you take the group assignment scenario, rather than sort of waiting to the very end where you're you're hoping you're going to get this really good assignment using something like the live documents or in teams or how you set it up, you can actually see all the steps along the way and you can sort of jump in and out. And straight away, like I said, if you see a group which is they haven't really started or they don't know how to start and, you know, you can then sort of provide that just-in-time feedback that they need to get going. Yeah, I, I agree. The progress that I see and we see, uh, the tutors and I, from the first two tutorials to the end is, yeah. and to the final product, they really advance. Yeah, so as before, we didn't quite always have that visibility. We, sometimes we, we guess a little bit. Uh, so I think now that the students are on the same platform with us um, is is really exciting in terms of uh, in terms of learning oh not actually we've got a comment from Tony um, I think it's important not to assume that all students are tech savvy many are but some are not and switch off as John says you can see which students are getting it yeah perfect mm -hmm. thank you um, I'm going to reshare this poll um, it's it's got the wrong title but um, I'm sure we can we can push past that. Um, just pretend, pretend it talks. It has the title of our session <laughs> when you when you um, tell us how you think it went. Okay, thank you. And um, I think unless someone has something to share or um, or you'd like have another question, um, I don't feel like um, being between you and um, home time or beer o'clock or whatever you have in mind. How secure, one last question uh, for John or, or, or you, Chris. How secure is the PowerPoint uh, 
I think uh, Lisa touched this point before, but how secure are they? Because I know you are always insisting with me that needs to be a secure uh, way and that they don't, you know. So um, I, using the PowerPoints for visual imaging, which I found very appealing, especially for my next classes, which are on digital media content, I I, I like it a lot. So um, you are going to create a monster today, but I, I and Chris knows what I'm talking about. So um, um, is that secure? Is that all right? Because I know my, my tutors insist on using Padlet, but I don't know, I, I find this easier. The PowerPoint, for instance, the way you did it, John. Yeah, look, I, I, depend, yeah. I, I think it depends on the activity that you're doing. So Padlet's good with, you know, if you want comments and ideas and brainstorming ideas, you can do images there. Um, but I... Yeah, look, I, I think it depends too on the ex extent of the answer you're trying to look for. Um, so there's a few variables there, but look, Padlet, Padlet is very good as well. Um, um, Chris, you got anything to add to oh, that? I just, um, I mean, uh, Padlet, um, Padlet has, um, you know, th there's a lot you can do with it. But in some ways, it's it's a little more structured, and you can yeah. um, it's it's less less creative, and less um, less collaborative. It's more a it, in many ways, it's more of a just a student response. Students can see, you know, they can react to each other's comments, and they can um, and you can see their comments. Um, but it doesn't allow actual rich collaboration in the same way that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can design something together and and work on a, you know, work on a shared resource or you know actually build something together. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really allow that. So again, as John says, it it, it depends what you're trying to do, what your goals are. Thank you. Yeah.